love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to retain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us be set a just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for the transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make you, that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. 
You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing amongst themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Lord is explaining and introducing uh, to the apostles and indeed to all the world uh, his past ministry. Um, we're told that they, uh, they did not understand and they were afraid to question him. That he was the son of man, which is a messianic title that he is applying to himself. He's self-identifying as Messiah. Um, and yet, um, at the same time, the messianic hope had been skewed in the minds of the people of Israel, the leaders, because they saw as a political leader, a power of someone who would rise. 
rise up and overthrow the occupying Romans. It was that kind of messianism. Uh, and uh, it's a short-sighted messianic vision uh, because, in fact, our Lord is coming with a total messianic vision, not uh, from a human geopolitical standpoint, um, though he is the incarnation of God, true God and true man, so he is fully human, but he brings the enlightenment of the fullness of God and God's plan. And so introducing this, it is a mystery. And um, in order to be disposed to receive the mystery, uh, one must be docile to the spirit and open to the things of God and not allow uh, uh, the world to uh, preclude receptivity and response to the Lord's plan and his instructions. This is important because uh, uh, it has to do with the salvation of the world. The ultimate fulfillment, the ultimate uh, destiny of every uh, person uh, and, and um, our participation in it. Uh, our Lord is starting to introduce and explain these things because he intends that we will be participants in this past mystery. And so the challenge to them once they have arrived in Capernaum, uh, asking them what it was that they were arguing about on the way, because arguing about things that were worldly in their orientation, about who was the most influential, who was the most powerful, who was the greatest, who, who was going to have the highest positions, etc. Uh, this is all very worldly, and it is unbecoming of one who is living and serving for the sake of the kingdom. It is a kingdom of heaven that is the objective, not an earthly kingdom. Um, and so he um, gives this enigma. If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be, he shall be the last of all and a servant of all. Um, and to be a servant, to be the last, um, entails embracing divine love and divine one who has to, I think, understand oneself as a beneficiary of divine mercy, divine love, and at the same time then to have the generosity of heart to serve that, to share it, to be a witness to it, an apostle of it. And I think that uh, it's so important for us in living out our lives um, that our Lord then and, and the Church gives us this passage uh, for our reflection this morning uh, and, and bringing us to these last couple of verses. Taking a child, placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives me, but one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. This, is, uh, this, this verse I think, is so loaded with meaning and significance. First of all, our Lord is saying, because children were not considered anything in the ancient world, in, 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 in uh, the secular kind of orientation of things. Children had no, no, no importance, they had no rights, uh, etc. They were considered property. But our Lord is bringing out the Father's mind and heart with respect to children. And we as Catholics, have a great riches because we have the fullness of what our Lord has revealed about these things. Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. Um, to receive the Lord. Uh, and the one who sent the Lord to receive the Father and their spirit is to receive the Almighty. It's not to receive a nothing, a cipher. It's not to receive uh, something of insignificance. It, it is to receive what is most significant. The gift of life that God gives, the transmission of life, that every human being is created in the image and likeness of God at the very instant of that uh, spark of life in the fertilization of the egg with the seed. In that moment of conception, God 
creates and infuses a spiritual soul, making it a living human being, a person who has a dignity and a destiny. The dignity, speaking of worth, means that because we are not merely material creatures, we have a soul created in the image and likeness of God, it means that all of the material value of everything in the whole cosmos cannot rival the value of a human being. No matter how far along they are in the process of life from the moment of their conception, no matter how weak or strong, no matter how uh, large or small, no matter how influential, or wealthy or poor or insignificant in the ways of the world, no matter how much uh, they are able to do for themselves or how much they need to be done for them. Whoever receives one child such as this in my name, which I think uh, can be read to understand that the Lord established this sacrament of holy matrimony, a union, uh, a commitment of permanence, fidelity, exclusivity, and openness to children, united in the Lord's name, that it is not some sort of make thing that people make up on their own terms. It's not divine, even though so many are trying to redefine marriage. God has given the definition to marriage. A union of one man, one woman, uh, for the, 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 the gift of their life, the mutual gift of self, uh, with fidelity, through the thick and thin, the up and down, the sickness and health, the richer the poor, the better the worse, all of them, until death do us part. And this is so that children can be conceived in the embrace of love and commitment. The children do not become the victims of the uh, immaturity and impulsiveness and um, flightiness, etc., of an immature But the children are brought into the gift of life and the embrace of love and that they are desired. No child should ever be brought into life and considered an accident. And a child to be received in the name of the Lord. In that sacred bond of marriage wherein a couple are living and modeling as an icon, a living sign of the faithful love of God for his people, the faithful love of Jesus Christ for his bride, the church, who reciprocates in that mutual gift of self, and out of which the great miracle of the transmission of life takes place. We cannot uh, overstate how awesome and amazing that miracle is. Despite the fact that we live in a throwaway culture, a culture of death and destruction. A culture that asserts oneself and one's own convenience, uh, etc., over and above every other group. But we are here to receive, to be inspired by, to be informed, and to announce and witness to the truth of the gospel, the gospel of life. The gospel that calls us to fidelity. The gospel that uh, uh, enables us to dedicate our energies to living life to the full and building a society and giving witness to a society, even if the world around us rejects the truth, even if the world rejects us, even if the world persecutes us and puts us to death, known what God's word is and what the truth is and what fidelity is. It will be known what compassion is by serving life, by making sacrifices for the good of the weakest and most vulnerable. It will be known by speaking up against evil in Christian charity. It will be known by the acts of mercy 
and the helping hands that are offered, and the needs that are offered to enable people to accept the children that God has given to them, and to enable them to discover the fullness of the meaning of their life, and God's plan for them, not only to make a contribution to the common good for the world, but to aspire to be saints in heaven, to find the greatness and to develop the potential that God has given. This is the beauty of the splendor of life together. Though we are challenging to one another because we have our flaws, we have our quirks, our limitations, our idiosyncrasies, you know, we have our sinfulness. But there are things we cannot tolerate. The willful destruction of the innocent unborn will never stand. Because it cries out for justice from God, as did the blood of Abel when his brother Cain slaughtered him. So his brother's blood cried out from the earth for justice. And this, my friends, with every fiber of our being, we must give witness to, not with the hatred of the world, but in charitable love for the world and for its conversion, repentance, and salvation. The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And after three days, uh, and three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. His Paschal mystery is a very core in the heart of what empowers us to live this witness and be willing to uh, do so no matter what the cost. Because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we have encountered, we do encounter, we are in the presence of the risen, living Lord Jesus Christ. And we are honored to approach him the utmost humility and, and recognizing our unworthiness to hear him speak to us, to be touched by him, to receive his mercy, and to receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Let us strive to honor the Lord and to reflect the sanctity of God in the way that we approach and treat the Eucharist. And with that same reverence for all that is holy, let us renew our dedication to the protection of innocent human life. From the child in its mother's womb to the uh, frail and the elderly who are uh, in uh, states of such great vulnerability and in every stage in between. God bless you.
community and the needs of the whole world.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who hold it to the truth and on the Catholic and the Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered through whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious 
ever virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the celebration of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. He thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This holy victim, this sinless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kind countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In the humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, 
and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O oh Lord, we pray, and all who seek in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us when we seek you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso her ipso, est tibi Deo Patria omnipotenti, in unità di spiritus sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculo. the Savior's command for my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. For I may say the word, and my soul shall be
Friends, uh, please remember that we have uh, resumed uh, Sunday e e exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament uh, following the 11 o'clock Mass, so you're inv all invited to come and spend some time adoring our Eucharistic Lord. The world needs you to be in door uh, to sustain the world and to provide for us the hope to overcome the evils with which we are faced that are so dreadful and such a, um, um, abomination before Almighty God. So let us make acts of reparation. And let us pray for vocations uh, to the priesthood and the religious life. This is the last chance to purchase tickets for the virtual performance of the True Streams concert. Um, it's based on the diary of St. Faustina, the Divine Mercy. We had the concert here in the church. It was stunningly beautiful. And if you were not able to participate, you still have a chance to see it uh, 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 by, by uh, streaming on the internet. So uh, it will take place on Thursday, September 23rd. This is a grand performance that you don't want to miss. So go to our parish website and you can uh, uh, purchase your tickets and be able to uh, uh, participate in live streaming to continue, or, or to the streaming of it. Uh, continued celebrating our 150th anniversary dedication of our church. Annunciation is having a gala on November 13th at the Marriott Marquis Hotel, just two blocks away. We're very excited to have a spy as a special guest speaker. Uh, James Olson, author of Fair Play, The Moral Dilemmas of Spying, is a devout Catholic who served for over 30 years, along with his wife, in the CIA uh, during the Cold War. Please visit uh, the parish website for details. I think it's going to be really, really fascinating uh, uh, talk and a, a wonderful opportunity to reflect upon the great gift of freedom that the Lord has afforded us. We need your help, uh, your help for our Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Join us on Wednesday, November tw uh, September 29th, and show appreciation for our law enforcement officers. We need volunteers to help assemble the lunches, hand them out to the officers, who stop by the church and deliver them to the local stations. This is a really, really worthwhile kind of thing. In, in time when, you know, all this cancel culture and doing away with leasing and so forth, it's just the, the society is falling into chaos and, and to anarchy. And uh, so we want to show uh, appreciation and support to those who put their lives on the line for our good and the good of the community. Project Mercy is Tuesday, September 21st at 7 p.m. It is our monthly Respect Life devotion. It makes prayerful reparation for the hol uh, abortion holocaust. So Tuesday, September 21st here in the church at 7 p.m. The 40 Days for Life Fall campaign is currently underway. We are participating in two campaigns. Mark your calendars for Annunciation Day at the huge Planned Parenthood off the Gulf Freeway, the largest abortuary in the Western Hemisphere, on Friday, September 24th. And then our day at the, the Women's Clinic on San Jacinto Street will be Friday, October 1st. To sign up, the Respect Life team will be outside today after Mass. I'd like us to have a really, really strong presence um, showing, you know, through fasting and prayer, showing uh, a way out. You know, there's a, on the other end of the ballpark, there's a bail bond place that says um, the way out or a way out, bail bonds. Well, this is the way out, right? Of making the worst decision of a, of, of a woman's life. And so let us be out there lovingly and charitably encouraging not only the mother, but also the father, the family, the richness, the, the, the workers over there, to offer them all the way out and the way to find redemption in the one and only Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Let us pray, O God, our refuge and our strength. Look down in mercy upon thy people who cry to thee. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, most sacred heart of Jesus, heal not with us, Lord, according to our sins. Help us, O God, our deliverer. Remember not, O Lord, our sins of old. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. O Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, say to hear us, O God, our only salvation, through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God and the Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints. Deliver thy people from the cares of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. We move to pity, O Lord, in our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forg forgiveness, we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal heart may recognize that these scourges proceed from thy holy nation and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 